rather the starting point of process mining is the transactional data that is uh, these days recorded by common information systems that are used to support the processes themselves. Welcome to Process Pioneers, the show that takes a deep dive into the minds of decision makers, key influencers, and process experts who are pioneering the world of everything process. Well, welcome to another episode of Process Pioneers. Uh, today I have the absolute privilege of sitting down with Marcello La Rossa. Now you may have heard of um, Marcello. He is a professor at the University of Melbourne, uh, but he's also the CEO and co-founder of Apramore, which is a, a process mining uh, tool or solution. Uh, Marcello, thanks for joining me. Thank you very much, Daniel. Much appreciated. What we might do to begin with is so that the audience or the people listening have a bit of a grid or framework for who you are and, um, and your background and experience, maybe if you can take us back to day one where your interest in BPM or your interest in, in processes um, began and then take us on a bit of a timeline leading up to where we are today. Thank you, Daniel. My experience with BPM started here in Australia about 15 years ago. I started my PhD in 2015 on the topic of variability management in process-aware information systems. So basically the, the idea was to identify and develop um, a set of approaches that could help organizations manage variability when it comes to modeling and understanding and analyzing the business processes. You know, right. variability uh, manifests itself, for example, in terms of uh, processes that are distributed over different geographic areas or per type of product um, or customer or performance. And after I completed my PhD in 2018, then I decided to continue on working in BPM by undertaking an academic career. So I stayed at QT until uh, 2017, and by then I got promoted uh, to full professor. And then at the beginning of 2018, I decided to trade the subtropical climate of Brisbane for, uh, say, the metropolitan vibe of Melbourne. So I relocated with my research group, we are 10 people, uh, down uh, to Melbourne, where I took on a position of professor and leader of the information system groups with the University of Melbourne. So that's my right. career in like a minute. Right. And so you're obviously working with a lot of um, students or you have been working with a lot of students, I would imagine, over, over the last 10, 15 years um, and seeing them come through the university program and then um, going out there and, and finding various roles um, in BPM, um, different process management, process automation different, in different areas. Uh, what, what's one of the, I guess, the, um, the key things that, that a graduate coming out of university um, should go into the workforce in mind? Obviously, university is meant to prepare them for that role. It's meant to equip them. Um, but as they're entering the workforce, they're taking that theory and, and putting it into practice. What, what's one of the things that you would encourage someone? Um... So, you know, at the university, we have a variety of uh, subjects related to business process management. We teach uh, process modeling, process analysis and improvement, uh, uh, process automation. Of course, we have a dedicated subject on process mining. We also touch upon strategic and governance aspects related to BPM. So, Definitely, we equip students with a wide range of approaches, techniques, and knowledge of different tools. But I believe that the most important characteristic that will make a difference between a strong student and eventually a strong BPM practitioner is their ability to understand where BPM can really add value to the organization. So it's not about the variety of methods, uh, approaches, and techniques that exist in BPM, but it's the ability of the future analyst to link the strategic need of the organization with the right set of approaches and tools to help the organization fulfill those strategic goals. And the problem is that often in practice, this is still a big uh, uh, gap. Basically, you see a lot of finely trained analysts that know everything about a process modeling language like BPMN or a particular uh, improvement technique like Lean or Six Sigma, but they still struggle 
to relate this to the business imperatives of the organization, imperatives that a BPM initiative should be capable of answering, of responding to in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. So you see that the result of that is that often these people tend to push for the specific methodology they are, say, quite confident in, say, Lean Six Sigma, within that organization, but perhaps that's not a perfect fit on the basis of that particular context, uh, socio-economical context the organization is operating in at that particular point in time. Maybe the organization is more in need for disruptive innovation, so radical wow. change of the business processes as opposed to incremental fine-tuning of the processes, right? Yes. So I think this is the most important skill that our students should learn, and that's what, what we stress upon uh, we stress on during our uh, uh, academic training. Right, right. And there might be someone listening right now that they're within an organisation that maybe they don't have a BPM framework or a, they, they're not very mature in terms of their, the way they manage their business processes. How, how does that person approach senior management? How do they get that buy-in from senior management? Because um, obviously you need to, you need to obtain that buy-in, that sponsorship, whatever you want to call it, um, to, to, for a, a project to be a success. So how do you approach senior management and, and articulate that yes, BPM will bring value to our organization? I, I guess it's different um, depending on the, the, the circumstance. You know, first of all, an important premise uh, that there are certain situations in which BPM is actually coming from the top. For example, when it is directly sponsored by the CIO or the CFO or the chief operations officer. In those cases, then basically BPM experiences a cascading effect uh, where um, certain goals uh, from a process-centric view are pushed down to the organization. So there is a sense of urgency, there is strong strategic alignment. The BPM is destined to succeed in these cases. But most of the times, as you said, the BPM rather comes from the bottom. It comes from an analyst, from an architect who's really passionate about process centricity, about a process-centric view of the organization. And they are left with the heart task of pushing BPM towards the top levels, right? So yes. there are two approaches. One approach is the so-called uh, a push approach. And uh, basically this comes from uh, communication theory. So basically you try to push BPM up the ladder by uh, picking it back to well-known established success stories and case studies that you can right. find in the literature. But what we found to be most effective is an opposite approach, which is rather the pull approach. Right. The pull approach is different in that you do not try to push BPM, to do BPM just for the sake of BPM, but rather, and you do not necessarily need to use a BPM terminology for that, you try to identify what are the key pressure points the key problems the company is experiencing according to their strategic blueprint mm. and basically try to tailor BPM to answer these particular uh, questions, to respond to these imperatives the company is facing uh, to accomplish. And then, of course, you can start uh, uh, with a proof of concept whereby you try to tailor the particular approaches that you need for the strategic objectives the company is after. E.g., if the company is in desperate need of innovating, then you can look at the repertoire of BPM methods that can help you achieve innovation right. by using the process lever. For example, design-led innovation or design thinking applied to business process management. And it doesn't have to be in BPM terms. You know, you may talk about design principles. You might talk about customer journey and customer experience. But eventually, under the hoods, you'll be using BPM techniques because you'll be playing on improving your business process operations, right? That's right. That's right. And I think for some organizations, if, if they hear the term or the word BPM, sometimes... 
um, it can be a bit of a, a, a turn off because maybe they've tried it five years ago. They had all of their processes documented, but there was no continuous management that they, they weren't able to extract any value from it because um, the organization kept powering forward. Nothing was, there were no incremental improvements. There was no radical innovation. The, the, employees they still had the same information inside of their head so they kept doing the same job um, day after day and senior management go hang on a second we did this five years ago um, but we got nothing out of it that was a waste of time that was a waste of money talk to us a little bit about the importance of making sure that there is that continuous management and that continuous improvement so definitely these uh, situations can happen in reality and of course you need in those cases to be able to demonstrate how different the initiative of today is from that of five years ago. One common mistake of BPM, so BPM is a principled approach. It follows a well-defined life cycle where we start with the identification of the processes within our organization leading to a so-called process architecture and moving on, we select those processes that are of, strat of, of the highest strategic priority and we start by discovering them, we analyze them, we identify opportunities for improvement, we implement changes and we monitor, we track whether these processes are performing, the new process design is performing according to our performance uh, targets. Now, the problem is when we do not diligently follow this approach often we get stuck into an excruciatingly long initiative aimed at perfecting the process architecture right. or at perfect, perfecting the large collections of process models that we have uh, uh, basically accrued over time. And of course, these are often cases where BPM doesn't pay off. You get stuck into your own little modeling architecturing initiative and you are unable to transfer results into practice, into the organization. So right. the idea is that while BPM is a discipline approach, it doesn't mean that uh, we have to enforce a strict waterfall model where until you have completed, that if you haven't completed to perfection your process modeling repository, you can move to analysis. Rather, we should take a selection of our processes, discover them and quickly move to analysis and rather try to complete the life cycle. So push it, uh, you know, in depth rather than horizontally for each uh, phase to try and do it to perfection. Right, right. Now, talk to us a bit so about... these are uh, common pitfalls. Yeah. Sorry, I was saying these are common pitfalls of BPM. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And, and now talk to us about... Um, with obviously traditional, I mean, you're talking about discovering processes there. And I guess traditionally um, that would be done with sticky notes and, and on a big whiteboard in some sort of room where you're bringing all of the key stakeholders together and you're asking questions and things like that. Um, but obviously, and for those that aren't, don't know or maybe missed it at the start, but you, you obviously um, are the, the CEO and co-founder of Apramore, which is a, a process mining tool. And um, th it's quite interesting because it, I guess it can't, what it does is it basically takes those discovery sessions and it, it uses the data that's already within an organisation um, and that is the discovery session. And, and it's not just asking people, um, well, what do you think is the process? What do you think is happening? But you're actually getting solid data there um, to find out that, oh, actually that, that process that um, you might have thought there were maybe four different iterations to it and four different ways the customer could, could journey that. Um, all of a sudden, when you, when you actually extract the data out of an organisation, you might have 1,200 different ways a customer has actually taken that journey, um, which is quite interesting. But talk to us a little bit about, I guess, this new way of discovering processes. So BPM as a discipline is currently being disrupted by process mining. Process mining is a, a, a set of techniques and a company technology that sits across process science on the one end, so where BPM is coming from, and data science on the other end. And as you said, Daniel, the starting point of process mining is not um, 
the experience of uh, those who actually perform the process within the organization, the so-called process participants, experience that we elicit uh, through workshops, uh, through interviews, by observing how they work in reality. Rather, the starting point of process mining is the transactional data that is uh, these days uh, recorded by common information systems that are used to support the processes themselves. Think of a claim handling process in an insurance company or a loan origination process in a bank or a student admission process in a university. Each of these processes is hardly performed manually these days. They are supported by one or more system, whether there is a claim management system, an ERP system, a student admission system, there is one or more systems that support the execution of these processes and by the same token, log a vast amount of transactional data. So the starting point of process mining is this transactional data to extract what we call actionable process knowledge. It's a deep understanding of the underlying business process supported by the systems and it's actionable because it's quite concrete. Whenever we find issues like bottlenecks, non-compliance problems, process mining equips us with insights into what could be the remedial actions to rectify this problem. And the disruption is really because of the paradigm shift that process mining is preaching. Moving from a confidence-based business process management where we can easily fall victim of the bias of the people that we engage in interviews and workshops so that we need to, to make sure we, you know, we don't fall in the trap to evidence-based BPM, the evidence that is provided by the data. And now looking at the life cycle of BPM, as we mentioned before, identification, discovery, analysis, redesign, implementation, and monitoring, process mining is also disrupting BPM in that aspect because it offers a new entry point to the BPM life cycle. We can actually start from the end. We start right. from monitoring, by monitoring the performance of our as-is business process, as it is executed, and as we get data from the systems that support these processes. And then we can use this data to automatically discover a process model by reverse engineering the flowchart out of the data. Or we can jump directly from monitoring to analysis by providing a range of performance statistics that can help us pinpoint bottlenecks, non-compliance problems issues that affect the customer experience or the quality of the service, right? right? And we can use this as a starting point for analysis. So basically process mining offers assistance to BPM throughout the full life cycle. So we mentioned about monitoring as being a new entry point. We talked about automated discovery and so process mining contribution to the discovery phase, to the analysis phase. Another one is redesign. We can use process mining, especially in a time of crisis, like that of COVID, to actually assess whether a given redesign, whether a certain set of remedial actions are actually paying off. Right. Because we can measure the before and the after. We can compare the behavior, so the operations, as far as a given business process is concerned, before and after the changes that we have implemented. So essentially, we can assess the effectiveness of a new process design. Right, right. And, and that basically helps us still perform the BPM life cycle, but in a more agile fashion, in a more rapid approach, right? Where we don't need to get stuck in a phase like discovery forever. Right? Mm -hmm. We can automatically reverse engineer the ASIS model and jump straight into our analysis. Great, great. Now, for some organisations, they'll when they hear of, I guess, new new technology that can help them um, Im improve the way their business operates. I guess for, for one example would be process automation. Um, there are some organisations that'll that'll jump um, headfirst into process automation. Let's automate everything. Let's. This sounds amazing. It's going to leverage resources and time and effort and energy and all of that. Um, but with process automation obvious like speaking to that specifically um if if you're just automating um, rubbish processes then you're just going to go in the wrong direction quicker um, but for process mining 
what what does an organization need need to do or need to have um, to be to be um, I guess equipped for a, a process mining um, journey or process mining exercise is there anything that they need to do or is every should every organization out there uh, seriously consider process mining because there's nothing that needs to be put in place beforehand so 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 your question has a number of points the first one is the typical trap of process automation we experienced that in the 2000s uh, with uh, the advent of BPM systems, you know, from uh, the ashes, if you wish, uh, or as an evolution of workflow management systems. And we are experiencing now, again, at the task automation level with robotic process automation. There is this tendency often pushed uh, through by vendors uh, to jump into automation straight away. Um, but um, there is a, an interesting quote from Bill Gates uh, that says that automation applied to any inefficient operation will magnify the effects of inefficiency. Right. While when automation is applied to efficient operations will magnify the effects of efficiency. It's something obvious, right? But yet it's a very common uh, uh, mistake when right. it comes to process automation. So uh, again, coming back to the idea of BPM being a methodology, we need to diligently follow the life cycle. Automation and so implementing change comes after after improving the process. We need to first improve the process because if that process is inefficient, it's non-compliant, once we automate it and we'll be able to process many more cases within the same time frame, we will just magnify the effects of such inefficiencies, such non-compliance uh, problems, complaints from customers, and so on. So it's very important that automation comes at the right time in the BPN life cycle, whether that is the automation of an entire process through a BPN system or the automation of a specific task to robotic process automation. Right. Now, the second point was process mining. What do we need to apply process mining and whether any company should jump into process mining or not? So process mining as an important starting point. Data must be there and data must be of a sufficient level of quality. Right. While, as I said before, most processes that are performed as of today, especially in the service industry, are supported by one or more system. So data will most likely be there. And in my experience, data has always been there. Anytime I've worked with an organization that wanted to do a process mining exercise, there are still some cases where the process might not actually be supported in its entirety by one or more systems. There might be gaps in this process that are actually performed, uh, fragments of the process that are performed manually. In these cases, what you can do is, uh, if the gaps are limited, basically to corroborate insights coming from process mining with insights coming from a traditional BPM approach. So you'll have to do interviews, workshops, observe how people work in reality to try and fill the gaps, right? right because right. if you do process mining only for certain fragments, then basically you're not gonna get a full view of your process. You might miss out on where the actual problems are. You will have a very compartmentalized view of your process and what's going on in terms of its performance. So the quality itself also is very important. It's not just enough to have data, but you need to have some key ingredients in this data. So you need to have a reference to the case identifier, a unique ID, e.g. the order number, the claim number, the loan application number. Often that is the case, but it might be spread scattered over multiple tables in multiple systems. So you need to concatenate this information uh, to obtain a unique identifier. Then you right. need to have a reference to the activity of the process that has been performed, e.g. claim received, uh, credit history checked, claim approved, and then at least a timestamp of completion for each activity. When is that particular activity within that case, or within that claim number being completed? So you see the ingredients for doing basic process mining are actually quite common. There yes. is nothing transcendental there. And uh, yes, there might be cases in which it's not so straightforward to extract this data, but the idea is to build connectors. So you do this exercise of extracting and pre-processing your data once manually. Once you understand the logic, then you can implement uh, 
uh, a connector that automatically grabs the data that is required, transform them into a consolidated event log, and then you can ingest that into your process mining tool like Apromore. Right, so whether any organization should do process mining, I think process mining is the future of BPM. And while process mining, like any other uh, approach that has been basically linked to BPM, does not plan to supplant the existing approaches, but rather to basically uh, complement them, uh, it's definitely something that we can't escape. As we move more and more into a digital world where everything is digitized and so logs, traces of our operations are stored in the systems, it would be full not to use this as a starting point for BPM because that is like as good as gold. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a concrete evidence of how the organization works and we shouldn't hide that but rather embrace these technologies like, like process mining. Right, right. And earlier you were talking, you mentioned about um, obviously the current climate with um, the coronavirus, with COVID, and um, obviously it's, it's disrupted a lot of organisations. For some organisations, it's wiped them out altogether. For other organisations, it's actually created a, um, a, an environment where their, their business is actually thriving right now. Um, and, um, but talk to us about how process mining um, can, I guess, support organizations through a time of crisis, whether it's what we're going through at the moment or whether it's, it's something else that may come along in the future. So as I mentioned before, uh, one of the use cases of process mining is so-called change analysis, where we analyze how our processes have evolved over time. So one quick win in the context of uh, a financial crisis like the one we are living these days with COVID-19 is to use process mining to assess different operating models. So you test out a model by checking basically after already a week or a month you've deployed it in whether uh, you are achieving the targets that right. you started with, right? right. Um, and, and then you can use it to rectify it on the fly. Another uh, more immediate uh, benefit is when uh, process mining helps us uh, through operation support. So, so there are typically two starting points for process mining. There is analysis of historical data, and there is also live analysis of event streams. Right. The latter falls under the area of predictive and prescriptive monitoring within process mining. So there is right. a range of approaches that uh, borrows uh, underlying methods from machine learning and data mining that helps us basically predict live performance of our business processes as process cases unfold. So as we are handling claims, as we are accepting them, loan requests as we are admitting students to a new course we can use process mining algorithms based on machine learning for example to predict what would be the likely future of these open cases e.g how long is going to take for this particular claim to complete are we going to meet or violate the SLA agreement a seven days? What is going to be the most likely continuation of this case? Is the loan offer going to be accepted or rejected? So right. by being equipped, uh, equipped with all these uh, predictions, an operations manager, like a claims manager, uh, can, can take treatment, can implement treatments to avoid problems from arising, right. right? To avoid the eventuation of certain problems like an SLA violations that may lead to fines, right? So basically it can be used to rectify our processes on the fly. Right. So that means that basically the um, effects, uh, the benefits of process mining would be quite immediate in this case. Right. So that makes it quite suitable to work in an environment where we are experiencing a fast change, like uh, uh, the, 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 the economic crisis we are living in mm -hmm. these days, right? Mm -hmm. So, and yeah. let's not forget that um, uh, beyond the transparency, which is the starting point for process mining, meaning helping us gain a deep understanding of how our operations really are, 
um, this transparency itself so opens up the doors for other value enablers such as efficiency mm. and uh, we all know that these days we are looking into a cost leadership mode where we are looking for any possible opportunity to save on cost to right. save on time right so right. process binding has a range of techniques that can help us improve gain efficiency uh, in our operations so it can also be used for compliance and compliance could also serve as input for reducing cost by, for example, diminishing the violations of SLA, right? Mm -hmm. So diminishing our exposure to potential risks of, of being fined or risk of frauds, right? But it can also help to improve the quality and the customer experience and to improve, as I was saying before, the agility, to so make more our processes uh, more suited uh, to, to, to changes in the environment, changes that might even be unpredictable. Right, right, COVID. right. Now, now, a lot of organisations out there, um, they are, um, as particularly in the, the APAC or the Australian region, I would say process mining is, is something that maybe um, they haven't, um, it's not something that they've thought about yet, or I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's um, quite a few advanced organisations within Australia that are, have already acquired tool, um, process mining tools and they're, they're looking at um, embarking on that journey. Um, I mean, there are some, some organisations out there that are still using very basic uh, process um, drawing tools. Um, but we, leaving all of that aside, knowing that, that organisations may, may not be thinking this far ahead, but what, what does the future of BPM solutions and BPM tools look like? Um, I, I mean, for some organisations, process mining is still a number of years in the future just because they're, they're not thinking in that way. Um, but, but if we were to look into the future, what does it look like? Yeah, unfortunately, as you know, uh, especially for BPM, uh, um, Australia has really never uh, been uh, in a leading role. Uh, we have always take process automation, for example. We have always been uh, a big follower, right? Mm. And the same we are experiencing with process mining. Right. So process mining has become a well-established uh, uh, approach in Europe, especially yes. in Western Europe, countries like Germany, the Netherlands, Italy, um, have a large number of organizations that already have a process mining practice in place. Mm -hmm. uh, the United States, uh, according to all market forecasts related to process mining, is experiencing the uh, fastest uh, growth at a pace, if I'm not wrong, of 900% growth. So that means that basically every day we have uh, uh, you know, virtually nine new companies or nine times as many companies as the day before. So it's right. growing at an incredibly fast uh, pace. Uh, this is not the case in Australia. We will definitely get there. This, as I was saying before, is unavoidable. It's just a mm. matter of time. Mm. And it is also our role to help democratize process mining. This is what we do with a promoter, for example, besides, of course, our academic work. Mm. But uh, your question was about, the second part of your question was about uh, what does look ahead of us uh, in terms of BPM technology. Mm. So um, definitely, I think that the main development uh, in terms of business process management uh, when it comes to technologies in the area of process mining. So there are uh, uh, two or three areas where we are experiencing very fast growth Process mining itself is an area that started from academia and is still strongly linked to academia where basically the new innovation, the innovation is coming from. But we have about 30 process mining vendors and each of them on their own is trying to push the bar by, you know, taking over ideas from academia and, uh, you know, uh, mixing this up or... Uh, um, Basically, um, so they are taking ideas from academias and also ideas, so demand from practice, and then basically synthesizing this in their products. Um, I think the one interesting area of development, technology-wise, is uh, around uh, what we call robotic process mining. Right. Robotic process mining is really the true combination of... Uh, 
process mining and robotic process automation. So right. some organizations are looking into task mining, basically the ability to mine UI logs uh, and then use this as a starting point to automate tasks uh, with, uh, with RPA bots. But uh, robotic process mining goes beyond that. And the idea is really to identify tasks that are amenable for automation and uh, by means of an RPA bot. These are tasks that can be uh, deterministically activated. You know exactly when to trigger them. And tasks may be basically capturing a routine made up of different uh, user actions. And these actions themselves are in a chain where each action follows from a previous action in a deterministic way. So you know exactly when to trigger the various actions in this routine. Right. And to be able to identify these candidate routines for RPA automations, standard process mining techniques based on notions like frequency, abstraction, etc., cetera, uh, are not suitable. Are not suitable because they will not necessarily discover, actually most likely not discover what can actually be automated. So under this umbrella of robotic process mining, we are designing a new range of process mining techniques that is specifically looking at identifying concrete opportunities for RPA automations, right? right? So candidates that can actually be automated and then it's just a matter of assessing the cost benefit of such automation. So that's one area. Another one is that process mining uh, can be used in combination with simulation. Right. So you can already automatically reverse engineer a BPMN model. Uh, that basically captures your ASIS, the way you perform your process uh, in this particular um, period, right, as of today. Right. And, but to be able to use that effectively for simulation, you need to enhance this model with simulation parameters. Right. So you need to specify the arrival rate, so how frequently you receive, uh, say, new claims, new loan applications. You need to specify the distribution of durations of activities, the resource allocations, the working patterns of the various resources, and so on, and branching probabilities, and so on and so forth. Now, Doing this manually is time consuming and you have the usual problem of falling into the bias trap. Like you really need to have data at hand to be able to create a simulation scenario that is as close as possible to reality. Right. Now, another area we've been focusing on with our research that is pushing the you know, technology uh, front of process mining is the automated discovery of the simulation parameters from an event log. So right. you have an event log as a starting point. On the one end, you discover your BPMN model. On the other end, you discover the simulation parameters that capture the actual performance of this process as of today. And then you use the latter to annotate the former. You validate this by comparing the performance results that you get by simulating the simulation scenario, by comparing this with reality. And if that is validated, then you have uh, an unbiased simulation uh, setting, simulation scenario that then you can use as a starting point for your what if analysis. Now, right. what if I increase the arrival rate? What if instead of 50, I get 70 claims per day? What if uh, I change the branching probability? What if we must approve more claims, right. right? For such and such reason. What if I add one more claims handler? senior claim center, what happens? How is the process performance affected? So you can use process mining in combination with simulation so that uh, basically you have a, a very concrete and um, rapid approach for analysis and redesign. And a third area is what we call the automated process improvement. Right. So basically we want to lift the bar one phase of the BPM life cycle higher from automated discovery and analysis to automated improvement, where we use uh, process mining techniques in combination with, for example, optimization and machine learning techniques uh, to be able to suggest uh, actions that can be taken to treat your process in order to rectify the issues that you have automatically identified. So basically, you start from a log and you obtain a recipe of changes that you can apply in order to improve your process.
processes with right. each change being attached a cost benefit function so you know what would be the trade-off here if i yes. implement this change what would be the cost of implementing the change versus the benefit that i would get right right, right. so i think these three areas robotic process mining um, discovery of simulation parameters and automated process improvement are the three next uh, uh, big uh, uh, technological waves in process mining. We start from research, one day we're going to productize them in a promoter. Right, wow, wow. So obviously um, we can only fit so much in a, in a 30 minute interview and we've tried to push it to, to 40 minutes, but I'm sure that um, there are gonna be people listening to this much hello that 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 you would have sparked a lot of ideas in their minds that they've probably got a thousand other questions racing through their head right now um, so if you do have questions for Marcello um, this is this video and podcast it's got to be on LinkedIn YouTube Facebook Instagram wherever you're listening to this feel free to um, to add your comments or questions to the, the comment feed below. We'll make sure that Marcello sees them and, and you'll be able to connect with him and, and, and talk about any, any, um, any of the ideas that he's talked about um, today. But Marcello, I just want to thank you so much for uh, joining me, sitting down with me and, and sharing um, all of your uh, knowledge, albeit the, uh, the short time we've had together. Thank you very much, Daniel. It's been a pleasure for me. And I hope indeed the audience will find our talk interesting.